That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! What's going on, LOM community? What's going on, everybody in the world? What's going on to everybody that's hearing me? Lockout being back again with another, with another one. That's all I have to say. Y'all know who I am. Y'all know what I do. Y'all know what I do. That's what's up. My name's like uh, uh, Lockout Men, and welcome to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button so that you know when I pop up. I want to welcome the LOM community in this behind the scenes interview that I'm about to do right now. Tragic situation. Um, truck driver over, over 30 years tragically lost her life as you guys already know i talked to orzel johnson the young man that actually pulled over and and found uh the young lady in today's interview we're going to bring her daughter her daughter decided to come on and chop it up with me to give me a little bit more background about her mother and what type of what type of person she was i want to thank her for that so right now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, jump right into it. I would like to bring to the stage Clara Thomas to the show. Thank you. How you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing all right. How are you? Uh, I, you know. I, I I could say I'm 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 doing better, but you know what I'm saying. My my heart is just heavy right now because of what happened to your mother. Um, without further ado, man, what what was your mother about, Christine? Uh, Christine Summers. Tell tell me a little bit about uh about your mother. Well, growing up, respect was always the key thing. You respected your elders, you learned from them, and it takes a village to raise a child. I know that. Um, and she was always very, very well-spoken, well-dressed. I watched her do construction and take catalytic converters off of cars. She worked, you know, as a mechanic, um, she taught me how to drive as well as my father. And she was just such a good role model, wonderful grandmother. And because I made her grandmother before she turned 40, she had to be called G mama instead of grandma because that was too old of a name for her. Okay. 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 G mama. That's what's <laughs> up. That's what's yeah. up. I like that G mama. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so and we oh. had a fourteen year old, twelve year old, and an eight week old grand G baby. <laughs> That's what's up. So you you was the first out of out of your siblings to have a kid. Yes, sir. How how did that make your mother feel? I was honestly. Um, she was mad that I made her grandmother before she turned 40. But once she held Victoria in her arms, she had nothing to show those grandbabies but love. Love and affection and attention. She took them on the road with her, just like she did me when we were growing up. Um, because me and my brothers would ride with our parents all the way across the country. We went horseback riding out in Arizona. Uh, went to a birthday party for security guards' children out in uh, the 
Arizona when they were running for U.S. Express back in, I think it was like 98. And so, uh, I mean, we would pick uh, shapes out of clouds, name rocks, and chase double rainbows. And that's how it was with me and my mom. So your mom was a your your mom was a truck driver for over thirty years. Where where did she where did she get her start from? Like, do you do you actually remember how she came? You know how she got into the to the industry? Like, what school she went to? If she went to school or or you know what companies she drove for? I I don't know the name of the school. My dad does, but my dad and my mom were my dad had his cdl first and they both became bus drivers through the county school system and then they moved on up from there to driving grain trucks and then if if information is correct of what i remember is uh my dad drove for a little while over the road and my mom stayed home and then she wound up joining him and we were sent to live with our grandparents and they were putting down over 7,000 miles a week going all the way across the country. She's seen every single state except for Alaska and Hawaii. Alaska, I'm not sure because I think she did take a ferry. But, um, I mean, when I turned 16, in order for me to be allowed to drive myself around, she had to know that I had a sense of direction and know what I was doing. And so she made me drive me, her, and my younger brother behind my dad in the big truck all the way down to Georgia and from our home. And then my dad parked the truck and got in the car with us, and I had to drive the rest of the way to Jacksonville, Florida at 16. Trying to, so, uh, trying to pass it, try to pass yeah, her. Good, stress. Try to pass her good driving habits on to you. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, we had fun. You know, if it snowed, we found an empty parking lot and we had our fun. But when it came to driving on the road, and when I went to go get my CDL, my mother looked at me and she said, "This is dangerous. This is, I believe, the third most dangerous job." in the world yes, it behind is. soldiers and Police. law enforcement Yep, yep. because of what we do and how many scenarios we encounter a day. Uh, your mother, I'm, 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 I'm reading, uh, I'm reading a few things here. Uh, your mother was, was like an inspiration to everybody that she came in, that she came in contact with. She inspired you to become a truck driver. Am I am I correct in the saying that? Between that and, and she allowed me to see the women's side of it, but my dad is the one who put me behind the wheel. But seeing my mom out there really did inspire me and, and uh, encourage me that it's not just a man's world anymore. Times are changing and this is going to be okay even in the world getting as chaotic as it is now um and it's dangerous and she always stressed that danger to me and uh i mean me and her we uh we've driven hundreds if not thousands of miles on the phone with each other I called her the first time I climbed Cabbage Mountain uh, in my own Kenworth T660. I was three months into my training with Wiley Sanders out of Troy, Alabama. And I called her. I said, Mama, I made it. Oh, that's good. You're only, you're only, you only have three months experience. <laughs> <laughs> How fast were you going? Oh, probably about 140 or so. <laughs> and so, I mean, she did have fun out there, but she always had fun as long as it was not at the cost of 
personal safety for her or anyone around her. So I know that if when she did that, she knew that there were no vehicles in front of her. If she had a straight shot down the mountain and she was just enjoying the moment. True definition of. And of, we've talked about. It. She's she sounds like a true definition of a of of a professional truck driver. Um, during, you know, during her time in the industry, did, did she, uh, ever relayed anything to you of what she, what she didn't like about it? Like, you know, what was some of her likes and dislikes in, in the industry? Yes. Um, she got her security clearances to haul federal freight for military arms and explosives and stuff. And she said the worst load that she ever carried, she could not sleep at all, were missiles pointed at her head. Ooh, 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 um, I can imagine. And, I mean, that's, a, that's a butt tightener right there, ain't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I don't know what all they got to haul while they were on those federal loads because a lot of that they are not allowed to release. They can't, they couldn't even tell their children. Mm. We don't know the places that they've been. We don't know everything that they've seen because a lot of it's classified. My mom was, she was so safe that she was able to get into the industry that deep. And it really, really put me on a pedestal about a week before she died, it was my birthday, and um, a few days before my birthday, she called me, and she said, the lady next door, her name is Robin, she's getting her CDL, and I'm out here with my truck letting her practice in an empty parking lot. Wow. But it's been a while since I was over there doing the training. And we need you to look in on her training. And my mom actually asked me for pointers to teach her. And that just, it made my whole day that my mom thought enough of me as much as I thought of her. That she could come to me knowing that I had been in the industry long enough and was a, I'm a certified instructor. Um, that she could come to me and know that I could help her, even if it was just over the phone, to teach another person. That's 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 the I'm I'm hearing that's the bond between you and your mother, man. That's beautiful. That that your mother can actually come to you. You know, you being like a new jack in the game, and she's you know she's the OG in the game, but she was still humble enough to come to you and say, hey. You know, I got this, you know, I got this new Jack that's that I'm about to that I'm about to, you know, teach maybe, you know, maybe some pointers from you, you know, being that, you know, you're more in tune with everything, the changes of the industry. You can pass it on to the uh, to the new to the new person. And that's and that's a beautiful thing. The the bond between you and your mother is deep. I, I can I can hear that. I, I really can. Um, where was your mother from originally? She was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and she moved down to Tennessee, I believe, in 1978 when she was about 12. And about five years later, she met my father. And then shortly thereafter, my older brother, me, and my younger brother came along. Okay. How many, uh, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many siblings that you got all together? Like uh, how many, how many of you are there? There's three of us that share the same mother and father. Um, There is, we do have a half brother, but we really don't speak with him. We kind of had a falling out. Um, That's understandable. But the core of us, we were five. My mom, my dad, and the three of us. And we're still close, but we've been devastated by loss. 
as I was um, telling you about before we came on the phone. Yeah, you you told me that uh, you 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 told me that your family has suffered. Um, I'm I'm reading the uh, the obituary as I'm talking to you. Um, her mother, her uh, her sister, your brother, and her stepfather. Um, you you guys you got you guys being hit with such uh tragedy you just said that your brother just recently passed before your mother um how did how did that affect yes, how did that what effect that put on your mother when when she lost her son me and her would go down the road crying together just remembering and sometimes laughing because my brother was young wild and free um he stopped to help anybody just like she did he would if he seen a car broke down on the side of the road he would help that person if they needed a, a starter replaced he'd take them to the park store and try and work something out for them um just like he seen my parents do just like i seen my parents do i watched them stop on the side of the road and pick up a black family off the side of the road and it was a mother, a father, and four children. And they took them and to a safe place for the night, made sure that they had everything that they needed before we continued on our journey. And that's the way that my brother was. Uh, he was always good for a laugh. Um, but we haven't been smiling so much in the past five years when we lost my mom's little sister, Michelle. Mm -hmm. um, and then nine months later, a year and nine months later, excuse me, my grandmother passed and my step grandfather, he passed away 20 years ago in 2000. So those three people were the ones that she had to support her to be the wind beneath her wings until me and my brothers got old enough that luckily we were able to kind of lift her up a little bit, even though she would still break down in tears because of if she was afraid that she would lose everyone around her. Um, and I, I, that was made even more relevant when I lost my husband and then just, 14 months later, we lost my little brother. I and then a year and a half, and we lose my mom. I am, I am so sorry. Um, my, my heart, my heartfelt condolences goes out to you and your family. Um, such, such, you know, such a heart, such a heartbreaking experience. And it, it, it makes the matter, it, it, now it makes the matter even worse that your, your mom was taken from you by some, you know, by some degenerate that didn't have nothing else better to do. Um, when I talked to... I'm not going to call to make it work. I don't know what kind of person he is. When I when I talked to uh when I talked to Orzel Johnson, um, when I had him on the show and uh we spoke uh we spoke about, you know, uh what he have seen and what he have done, you know, me and him me, him and my co host at the time thought it was thought it was an accident, you know, that you know, that she could have probably slipped and fell. And unfortunately, nobody wasn't, you know, nobody didn't pay too much attention to stop over and, you know, see about her well-being. Thank God for Orz for Orzel to to do that, uh, you know, to go and check on her well-being. But as we got, you know, in such a huge risk, I just feel too I'm 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 sorry, you broke up there a little bit. What you say, ma'am? I'm sorry. Um, I, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. Oh, no, um, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I actually reached out 
to Ozell and thanked him for stopping because he said that there were trucks and cars that stopped and just kept on going by. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think that, you know, that guy could have still been around. It could have still been a dangerous situation. And he put himself in that situation to see about the well-being of somebody besides himself and so selfless. And I reached out to him and told him that I really appreciate the fact that he would do that for my mother, that it meant the world to me, that he cared enough and had enough compassion to take time out of his life, even though he was short on his clock and even though he was trying to get to where he was going and he had other things that he needed to see to, he still took his time, stopped on the side of the road to see about another human being that looked like they were in distress. Yes. And I hope that there was no traffic when she was assaulted or when this happened to her. Because I cannot bear the thought that someone could drive past seeing this happen and allow it to happen. Because that's how evil conquers the world. It's for good men to do nothing. It is. It's, it's, as I said, it's, it's heartbreaking to, to, you know, to know now that, you know, I talk about, I talk about this being in the industry as well, that there's, that there's no, there's no respect for us no more. There's no brotherhood for us no more. You know, I mean, if you was to see, you know, somebody, you know, getting assaulted or, or at least that looks like something is wrong. I mean, you could have at least pulled over. And if you didn't want to get involved, at least call call the cops. Um I go that I taught my students that. Um I ran into a few scenarios with my students while I was a dedicated driver driving up and down sixty five every day between Madison and Pensacola. And I ran into a few situations where we seen accidents happen or someone run off the road. And I tell them, look, we don't know what's going on. It is unsafe for us to stop. So we're going to call 911 and we're going to make sure that somebody gets to that scene to get them seen to. Because with me and most of my students being female, Okay, y'all. So I had to pause the video right here because, unfortunately, the audio uh, has crashed. Being that the audio crashed, I had to flip it and use the next session of the video. It's going to be the audio from the live session of the uh, of this interview. So again, I apologize for that. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> you know technology electronics you you just don't know so here's the second half of the video please enjoy and thank you it could have put us at risk to stop exactly so we called 911 and got agency services there and handled the situation that way which is what I wish my mother would have done but well, that's what I'm about to do, uh, Claire. Uh, I'm about to take you back to the day. Uh, what you was doing at the time when you got the call and how was the call received? Like, did a cop call you? Did you get called by the media? How, how did you find out uh, about your mother's passing? Well, first of all, uh, having a new baby, I was sleep deprived and I was just trying to get a little bit of rest. And my father called me and said, we got news that your mom's been in an accident. She's hurt. And he kept saying, you know, I think your mom might be dead. And he had me and my brother both in his ear going, no, mama's not dead. He had it in stereo. And they drove my dad 
and my brother drove down there um, because my dad uh, lost his left leg uh, just a few months ago um, due to his health and my mother was taking care of him um, and so they were headed to Birmingham they called me and then once they got down to Birmingham they called me back and they they told me that my mama was not in this world anymore and I had I had 10 minutes to put my kids on the bus and I didn't want to I wanted to find out what was going on and let my children have a day unburdened with their friends before this came crashing down on them and so I sent them off to school they knew something was up but they didn't my kids did not find out until I went and got them from school and brought them home and sat them down and told them and they were devastated as well how did it how how did it now being the newborn you know the newborn probably might not know what's going on but as far as the other kids that is old enough to know what's going in or going on how did they handle it my son's a lot like me he keeps a lot of his emotions in and so he it says that's not right i just seen you mom the other day she she's fine I know, you know, G Mama's gone. My daughter just broke down in tears because my mom is the strongest woman that I have ever met. And not only strong physically, strong morally, her character and everything about her. She was just very strong, very independent. Um going to do things right if you can't do things right the first time you're not going to get a second chance with her and so she had a huge influence on my children as a matter of fact my son is named after my mom and my daughter and I really relied on each other through take your time the day that followed when uh, when i but, when um I, when i when i when i go back and read the the updated article um about uh, about what actually happened um it says here that she was on the phone with with her husband um did did your now this is your yes. this your father or father in law before I go into my next question my dad okay so this is your father so did did your father tell you what was the conversation between him and her as as far as why she why she stopped and why she was there All of a sudden, um, he said that sh they were just talking like they always do. Um, they, you know, like I said, drove trucks together for 20 years and no strong marriage uh, it survives that unless it's, you know, ironclad. And so when she was out on the road, my dad would call her and they would talk for hours and hours. And um, he ha did happen to be on the phone with her. And she said, oh, my God, I think there might be somebody walking in the interstate. I, I'm not sure. And then she thought she hit something. She wasn't sure. And so um, she got out to make sure that either that if there was a person in distress that they were taken care of or if it was something that needed to be seen to on her truck that she was able to see to it and still make her delivery on time. She got, I know that she got out trying to assess the situation. They said her truck was locked. She had her keys 
and a flashlight. My mom has always told me as a woman in this world, you cannot trust this world. You must have something that you can defend yourself with. So I understand that she had the flashlight and that was never returned. Well, I'm still waiting to find out if that has any relevance. But we do not know at this time. When, when but she did lock her truck up. That that's a good habit to have. You know, I I when I when I started out here, you know, I used to have a bad habit of leaving my truck unlocked. Um, unfortunately, I was a victim of a robbery, which I never talked about. But, uh, you know, somebody just casually walked up into my truck and, you know, took my go bag that had, you know, thousands of dollars of, you know, computer equipment, cameras and all like that. You know, that was it, it was my fault. But I, I learned that I that I now, you know, whenever I leave my truck going into the receiver shipper or even going outside you know I, I i lock my truck up you know i i, I leave it running but i but i do I lock mean, it up so this is with my mom at a truck and if i went in she would watch my truck for me but if i didn't if my mom wasn't there or another driver that i knew or worked with um then I walked my truck up because my mom told me to get two keys to leave the ignition running and you make sure those doors are locked. You have to have a way to get in and you're going to want that air conditioner going when you get back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, you, you, you mentioned that, that she had the flashlight and you, you still don't know if the flashlight was relevant in 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 the case um when orzel walked up to her he said he saw the flashlight near her so yeah we're we're not sure you know like you yes, said sir. probably about 22 inches to 32 inches in length it's uh, a mag light and they sell them at every truck stop and they sell them in every company store exactly Carla, again, like I said, I, I personally, I carry not. I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch that. What'd you say? Personally, I carry not. <laughs> I always have, I always will. That's something that my late husband instilled in me. Uh, I spent hours listening to him sharpen knives on a whetstone at home, and. I have multiple blades on me at all times, unless it's not allowed in the building. I do respect rules, but my children know that anywhere I go, they stay close to mama because mama's got them. <laughs> That's what's up. Carla, it also says in, in the same article that she just hung up with, uh, with with nine one one, and while she was on the phone with uh, nine one one, that's when uh, that's when she was attacked. While she was on the phone with the phone operator, did anyone from uh, from the law enforcement, like uh, the detective or anything like that, gave you guys the opportunity to listen to the uh, to the nine one one call? If anyone's been given a chance to listen to the call, I'm not aware of it. Uh, my dad has asked if she was on the phone with 911. Um, we do not know. Uh, we have not heard the call. We have not seen the call. And we have not been uh, notified about the details of any such call if there was one i, I don't know carla when, when now that now that the news is out uh and they got the perpetrator in custody uh did 
the detective or anyone from the uh from the law enforcement get in contact with you guys to let you know that they that that they called him and he's in jail yes however as i have said my mother taught me to respect above all other things and so being that he's her husband my father is taking all of those calls and I don't know what information he has or has not received. I only know what is filtered through him to me. There may be certain things that he doesn't want me to know or maybe doesn't want me to know just yet. I don't know that I know everything. I don't try to know everything. But we'll see as, as everything unfolds. I'm sure we will find out um, during the process. All we can do is take it one day at a time. Carla Thomas, everybody. Her mother, Christine R. Summers. Uh, she was the unfortunate victim of a uh, of an attack on the highway in on Alabama. A little bit more about her, uh, Miss Christine R. Summers. She was 53 of Hazel Green, Alabama. She's originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, she was a devoted wife, mother, daughter, and a 30-year female truck driver. I would have. I would have. I would have probably enjoyed having a conversation with this young lady. 30 years, female, it's, it's, it's uncalled for. I mean, it's, it's unheard of in this particular industry. Uh, she survived by her daughter, Carla Thomas, which who's on the phone with me now, her husband, her son, uh, she has uh, one, two, three, four, three grandchildren. Am I right? Am I saying that right? Three grandchildren. Three, three, three grandchildren. Yeah. Her, her father, her sister, and her brother. But unfortunately, as uh, as Carla told me, they they have had tragedy uh, in her family, uh, and this and the tragic uh death of her mother just makes it even more harder um carla you 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 being a trucker yourself um you being a female trucker yourself how do you how how do you go by uh how, how do you go by protecting yourself out here uh, you know how do you, how do you go about protecting yourself and not making yourself Honestly, vulnerable out here? The day before all of this happened, I was actually cleared to go back to work by my doctor from maternity leave. And now after this, it's seriously making me think twice. And that is a tragedy in itself because I love driving. Truck driving is not a job. It is not a career. It is a way of life. And I've been caught up in that since I was a little girl. So it's always been my dream to be able to follow in my mother, who was such an inspiration to me in her footsteps. But with recent events, I don't know that I'm going to be back out on the road anytime soon. But she did have more grandbabies. However, my brother never got married. And so they are not hers by blood. But to her, they were all her grandchildren. And she loved all of her kids. She was especially close to my older brother. Um, me and her were living in a man's world. 
and so we didn't have a lot of girl time. But what she showed me, I'll never be able to thank her enough for. That's what's up. That's what's up. Man. Carla Thompson, thank you very much for coming on and sharing uh, sharing your mother, Miss Christine R. Summers. Um, my condolences to you and your family. Uh, I hope, uh, I hope, you know, I hope things get better. I, I know it's, I, I know it's, is probably might be easy for me to say, but hard for you to do. You know, I, I got, I got family that, you know, my aunt recently passed and she was the last of her family so i i you know being that that's my aunt you know that's that's my cousin's mother you know i still can't imagine the the death of of losing a loved one you know what i'm saying and losing a loved one in a tragic way that that you have so again my my heart is out to you my condolences is to you and your family um you guys definitely stay blessed and uh and and yeah hopefully you get justice out out of out of this situation if there's anything that if there's anything that should come out of it you should get justice out of this situation because she did not deserve she did not deserve that that's all we're asking for is justice we want to make sure that we have the right guy that's not circumstantial that the facts are present and we don't want to put someone innocent uh behind bars we want to make sure that this is the person that's done it and just to spread the word that this is not a nice world that we live in everyone needs to be extra careful and if you come up on a scenario that you're not comfortable with don't get out and always make sure that you know how to defend yourself or you have someone you can call in this kind of scenario you got to have somebody to watch your back and that's what uh, truck drivers have always done that's what ozell did when he stopped on the side of the road Definitely. Shout out to Orzel Johnson. That brotherhood Johnson. still there. It was definitely forgotten. Yes, definitely. Shout out to uh, definitely. Shout out to Orzel Johnson. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. We, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't appreciate him. I couldn't appreciate him more for for doing that because, like I said, when I talked to him. You know, it was just so many cars going past and nobody caring. And yeah, when when he did that, that was that was that was I heard awesome. the interview. And so uh for him to say that he was short on his clock, that there were cars going by and that he was on the phone with a loved one of his or I think he said a female coworker. You know, we, we all stay in touch. It's a big group. The brotherhood is not dead. It's just coronavirus. <laughs> we, we just have to practice social distancing a little more than others. <laughs> you know, right? You know, right? Well, uh, well, well, Claire Thomas, thank you. I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, I know you're busy over there with... Uh, with getting things situated uh still um they uh, I'm, I'm did did you already have the funeral for your mother already yes we did and i did see her before she was cremated and i did see her before the service and everything and uh she was such a good woman any other way uh I we would have rather have gotten the news that a car hit her or something like that than for such a wonderful person to have such a horrible death. I 
no. That's what hurts the most. And that's and that that and like I said, that's I, I agree with you. I mean, it's 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 heartfelt. We we as truck drivers, we we in this we we in this dangerous position only to get you know only to find out that she wasn't in an accident. I'm, I'm, that's even bad too. But to to have your life taken by another person for no reason. It's shocking to me. So, so yeah, may her soul rest in peace. Um, very humble soul. Uh, I wish I, I, to be honest with you, I really wish I had the, I really wish I had the opportunity to meet her. But I am glad that uh, I am glad that you reached out to me, or I reached out to you, and we came together and and we got this conversation in. So I, I really do appreciate it. Well, to all the truck drivers that might watch this podcast, stay safe out there. Don't forget your CB radio is always on. It's not just for backup. Don't forget 10-4. Don't scratch the shiny stuff and keep it rubber side down. That's what's up. Carla, thank you very much. I appreciate you. You have a blessed day. Yes, sir. All right. You too. Carla Thompson, everybody. Once again. Family. Been through some hardships, but they they bounce back, though. They bounce back. If you guys, uh, we're about to go ahead and uh, end this right quick. Um, I do appreciate Carla Thomas coming on, chopping it up with me. I appreciate Orzel Johnson coming on, chopping it up with me. Uh, I appreciate everybody in the LOM community uh, coming in, uh, chopping it up with me. Uh, D Nitty, Chicago BBW, Mahat, McComad, Attitude, and uh, and the rest of you guys. I appreciate you guys being here. If you like this content and more don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell for more content like this you know what i'm saying yo if you want to support the channel support your boy get me some coffee or give me something to drink right now i'm drinking some tea hook me up with the cash app that's in the uh description below the cash app dollar sign lockout man or hit me up in the uh in the uh in the coffee app man um i appreciate you guys watching i appreciate you guys listening thank you very much and on that note i'm not going to keep you guys i'm just going to say peace blessings and be well you guys take it easy and i'll come back at you with another video i'm out oh, there we go there, hold on uh Oh, wait, two. There we go. <laughs> I had to close the banner out. <laughs> All right. <laughs>